everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and we are back for another amazing day of acrylic April where step by step I'm going to show you how to paint in acrylic paint this close up picture of an iris flower. So we're really going to zoom into the details of the flower and the colors and the mix. To help me do that is my husband, John. Hello. If I'm demonstrating a technique or a color mix, John's going to make sure that one of our robotic cameras is pointing at it. So if you're following along at home, you can see closely what's going on. To also help you in that journey, uh, whether you're doing this as a single painting because you like irises or you're participating in the 30-day painting challenge, there are traceables on the website. Uh, I'm going to demonstrate how to draw this in. But if when I'm doing that, you don't want to do that, you could just use the traceable on that step. We also have step-by-step -step mini books which are the steps written out in instructions with extra information on the color mixes. So if you need that kind of going back and looking like, how do we get those colors that's there? All of that is on the website. You can find that in the description below. Um, all of the paintings are in the playlist. So you can go and do them anytime. Remember, um, you know what? Blooming takes a second. So give yourself time to grow in this art journey. If you're painting this with me today, though, there's only one thing left to do. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me. I'm going to show you how to paint this cool painting. So here we have an eight by eight surface. I have a wish intention for you guys out there is that you see your potential. I think that's something that everybody in group could do a little bit better, which is recognizing in your own painting what you've done well just to let you know where it is on the palette i have mars black phthalo blue next to ultramarine blue next to quinacridone magenta next to cad red medium next to cad yellow titanium white i'm going to start with a number four brush there's a number four round and i'm going to grab some ultramarine to kind of just sketch this in i'm going to come over here if this is the halfway point i want to come over um just about an inch from that and make Two little lines going up, oh gosh, half inch apart. And um, I know John's going to ask this later, so I will tell you guys this right now. The reason I'm not painting this black first is there's so many bright colors on this shape. I thought we would, in the spaces that are black are simplified enough that we're going to paint in some basic stuff first. Sketch it in, like figure out where our lines are, and then come back with the black. Seems <clears throat> reasonable. Now... In the center here, let's make a little mark. This is the center of the structure of that flower above the stem. So we're going to come up and make a little bend. And it's going to arc back this way. This is a little bit like O'Keefe in that we're going really close on the flower, right? Really close into the flower. And, and that's a very particular style of painting. Um, she kind of really made it famous but it's this idea that we see something from a different perspective instead of in a distance or a composition we get up on it and then it becomes kind of almost an abstract i'm going to kind of make a little fluffy area over here for the little bits that are fluff now let's come over here and we see kind of another little element and this one bends over that way and almost into the black it goes so it's really kind of taking up a full structure and then our little orange space comes up here. So you can see I'm giving myself some idea of where those structures are. Coming up through the middle, I'm gonna come up about an inch. And then I'm gonna curve over. And I may go up on the center of the curve before I try to do the little folds of the flower just to make things easier for myself. Let me get a little bit on my toe here. So some of this petal kind of ruffles up. It bends over and we want to kind of capture that. Another little bend and then perhaps a little fold. So they're kind of a weird twisted little folded inner petal. And I would say uh, for you guys, it'll be catching these like curves and things at home to really feel like, you know, you've got a handle on it. I'm gonna get the little forward curve. Are you seeing these kind of little bends, John? Oh yeah. Been so quiet. Oh, just, just watching you. So, I'm so chatty today and you're so quiet. Well, whenever I'm thinking, 
hard. <laughs> I think sometimes John tries not to break my concentration. It's true. So I don't get lost in the pedal. I'm going to kind of bend this out a little bit, give it a little bit of personality. Because, man, these things always have the personality. Wiggle that line. So, you know, in a sense, we are kind of drawing this very lightly with ultramarine blue paint, kind of getting the structure. I'm going to come right out here. Come throw a little line up there. And we're going to end right here at the upper left corner. Towards the point of that petal, I'm going to come in, wiggle up, out, and off the page. And I can even uh, kind of paint a little fold up on that petal. Mm. Coming off here, I'm going to give myself a little guide for, there's a bend in that where we're going to have shadows and patterns and things. It's going to be a lot of fun. So this is almost an abstract. When we, when we zoom in on a subject like this, where it almost, you know, um, detaches us from what the object is, mm. that itself kind of becomes a bit of an abstract. Not a pure abstract, because obviously there's some objective nature to it. Sure. But fairly abstracted, given everything that's going on. I'm going to blend a little bit of this out here, and then say that it comes there. So we've got... Two little petals. What's well, a really neat structure, isn't it? Look at us go. We're doing okay. All right. Sip my coffee. When we come back, then we'll paint in the black. So I have my basic outlines in. I know where my petal structures are going to be and how they're going to be. So I'm going to go ahead and take a filbert now, number eight filbert, and load it with black paint and paint all the areas that are not flower with black. You'll notice I kind of come in on the petal line, and that's just to give myself some extra give on the flower shape and everything. It's actually pretty easy to make adjustments on a painting like this because you can just paint the background black back in black. It's a little bit fussy to kind of get around these structures. Yeah. If you have really thin or watery black paint, you may need to do come here and kind of go into where I know that it's going to be fuzzy a little deeper than um deeper into it than it goes out that way I can kind of layer over easily right got to make a strategy but you can see there isn't a lot of black on this canvas so it didn't behoove me to paint it all black first could have done it before done it earlier with the rose yeah you've done different ones that way there's always different ways to do a painting. When people uh, ask me questions, shouldn't you have painted it this way or that way? I'm like, you can. That's an should option. Should is a hard thing. Yeah. You should ventilate your studio if you have VOCs. You should do that. There's needs and wants. <laughs> yeah. You need to ventilate your studio. You may want to paint the canvas black first. Just a little sliver there. Mm -hmm. Just a sliver. And then the rest up here, not too bad up there. This is a pretty chill step. Now, you could have used the traceable to, uh, and I forgot to say it on that step, which is that when I'm sketching in is when you use the traceable. Um, I will make sure I say something at the intro. Oh, yeah. Uh, but that's okay. Like, most of the time, if you're tracing, you know, if you're at that stage, you would be looking for those resources. And where would you find them? You can find them on the website and on the video page. 
in the description down below. In the description down below, we do have links to the website and the video page in the description down below. Or you can just find us Art Sherpa on Google. Now, if you found yourself here and yeah. you've already drawn it in, yeah. congratulations. You drew in the painting. But if you find yourself here like, man, I wish I had a trace. We got one, we got one of those. It was real cute. I actually answered a question this morning on the YouTube channel for somebody who was doing a previous acrylic April. And they're like, look. I could do this, but I don't want to freehand it. I'm like, good news. <laughs> Every one of these has a traceable. We have a plan. You're not expected to freehand. Sure, I get it kind of around those edges just for uh, the photography and framing later. Mm. Just you know? all that black in the background. Yeah, you just want a nice even covering of matte black or shiny black. Really, that's up to you. Mm. I like matte. I like matte. Ben's pretty cool, too. Huh? Ben and Fred. No, your dad jokes always get me. In all fairness, John did dad jokes before John was a dad. They were like very organic to him. <laughs> Super deep in his sense of humor. All right, let's dry this thoroughly. We'll come back and I'll show you what to do in the next step. So on a very complicated pedal structure like this, or really in complicated subject matter, sometimes it's easiest to paint the furthest layer from you, the viewer, or the artist. And the deepest layer in this painting is these two back pedals. So we can begin with those and then layer each subsequent pedal on top. I think I'm going to begin with my um, filbert. I'm going to continue on with it initially. Because right. it's a nice shape for a flower. It's not cheating. It's a good shape. We like filberts. I've got a little phthalo blue, a little ultramarine blue, and a little bit of quin here. And we have a couple interesting things going on. This lower part of the flower is like in these stripes mm -hmm. that we're going to have to capture. And then it's going to go into these like purple kind of interesting colors. And I'm going to get into my blues and purples up here. Right. I think I'm going to get into my quinacridone magenta and my ultramarine uh, blue kind of work out some of these colors as I go. Fun to do. Yeah. It takes a few layers and don't let that worry you. This is petal layer one. Come back with the round brush and get little wrinkly details in and everything. You're a little darker blue over here. Starting to talk about the way the light is hitting the petals. So see, I've added more ultramarine blue mm -hmm. and just mm -hmm. continued in. Now here, I'm going to just feather this back a bit, and I will come in later and layer in the white. Right. I just want to make sure that I'm capturing this as I go. Back into my blue purple, and we'll come over here to this other far petal. A little more blue on there. Sometimes we're just getting some paint on the canvas. I like that blue. I do too. It's just very pleasant. Maybe a little more magenta as I come down. And I'm definitely going to let this feather. 
Now I'm going to rinse out thoroughly, thoroughly, maybe from two cups of water because I really don't want any color in here at all if I don't have to have it. And I'm going to grab a little of my white and yellow. Just a smidge of my red in there. It's kind of an interesting color, like, like a very light coral. And I'm going to come up through this structure. And feather back in. Okay, I'm doing that? Yeah. I'm going to rinse out if I get too much purple on my brush because the purple kind of gray things out. And keep working in that little bit of coral color. It's a very light coral. Yeah. I'm coming back and forth here. Bit of a crazy transition, but you got it. You got it. Okay, so that's really what we want to get for the first layer. Let's dry this thoroughly and come back and continue to build up the beautiful colors that is the iris petals. So I've got an interesting transition I've got to do, and to help me do that, I'm going to use my uh, Gloss Glazing Liquid by Golden. Um, you can just use water if you don't have this. This is just something that I have come to really enjoy and appreciate over time. Um, I don't want you to feel like you ever have to have anything, but I will always tell you what makes my life easier. Hmm. I'm also going to be using my round blender to get soft transitions. And one of the first easy kind of soft transitions I want to get is I want to take my quinacridone magenta and my cad red, and I'm going to make kind of this... Oh gosh, it's like a rose color. It's really bright and vibrant and I love it quite a lot. Mm. I'll go ahead and mix it down into my white mixture. A little glazing liquid. And I'm going to begin to pull into the petal. Now, I'm going to start using brush strokes that imply the shape and directionality of this petal. Gotcha. You know, maybe a little more white. So the glazing liquid will let me kind of do thin little layers over this. Yeah. And it also slows down the drying time of the paint. So I have a minute to transition. From here, maybe a little more purple right there. Kind of blendy, blendy, blendy. It's an it's experience. I won't lie to you. It, when you first do these, you're like, wow, there's a lot going on. There is. That's why they're fun to paint. They really are pretty. Because they're so pretty. Now rinse out thoroughly. I'm going to kind of get into this little area where there's a little bit of almost, you know, the yellow orange with the white. The reason I like to use this tool in this medium is that there's a there's sort of a texture and effect to these leaves and these help me get that that softness ah, makes sense I'm 
a little red. You can see me kind of just transitioning down. Back into the yellow and white. Isn't that awfully soft and delicate now? Oh, yeah. Really lovely. Now I'm going to take a little of my Thalo Blue and Ultramarine Blue. A little bit at the edge there, just creating those little forms. A little dark blue down. Yeah. This petal has a little fold up there. Yeah. I just want to make sure I capture it. Push back a little blue here, a little edges of that petal. Come back with a little white. Right along that little edge. Yeah. And come here. And I'm just like, I can let it get into like maybe the quin there. So it's like almost like a lavender. Look at all that interesting little dimensionality. It really is. So it does start to become almost a abstracted painting. And see, I'm curving that over. And let's, that's a lot to take in. Let's get you there. We're going to be doing a similar thing on this other pedal, but let's get you there because that's a lot to take in. You know, pause, rewind, use the mini book, get the step by step out. That way you can see what you're doing in each step, not just here in the video, but in each of those things. So those resources are available to you, assisting you through this journey. One pedal side down, other pedal side to go. Very similar process. All right, so I'm going to get my round brush again. Let's kind of preload a little of the glazing medium in it. A okay, little priming. Um, you could again use water, so don't don't get stressed with it. I guess is my point. I'm going to come up on the inside ridge here and kind of deepen this value. And I do tend to uh, stroke the direction of the petal. I want to get a little white into it. That help implies the shape, huh? Yeah, it does. Just a little directionality really makes a big difference to the shape. Now over here, I might add a lot more white, get a little of my glazing medium into it, and come along this edge. And a little bit of my Quint Magenta into my Ultramarine Blue, getting that purple going, right? I 
I'm going to bring that up through the petal here. And you can see that curve and that brush stroke. Brushing that down. Similar stuff up top. Back into the phthalo blue. A little white. Glazy medium. I do like the glaze. I won't lie. It does make my life easier. It What it does is it really helps the glide of the brush yeah. over the canvas. It slows down the drying time so you have better blendability. And it allows you to tint or glaze. Usually you buy different products for that. This is just an all-in-one. And it's the most beginner-friendly product of its type. Because sometimes these products are actually not very beginner-friendly. They have a lot of instructions. They might have safety issues. Um, and if you get the mixes wrong, you can have problems. This doesn't do any of that. Uh. Maybe a little more weight into here. Coming on the edge a bit. And back into the blue down. Over here to my purple again, which we just love so much. Maybe a little more magenta this time. I'm going to rinse out pretty thoroughly. And then we're going to be down into these wonderful colors that we were playing with earlier. Really pretty. Yeah, they're a lot of fun. So blazing medium and our wonderful pink. Which is the quinacridone magenta and the cad red. These two mixed together. A little white. Rinse out a bit. Now I had a mix over here of a little cad yellow and a smidge of cad red with titanium white. And I am encroaching on this petal a bit. But I can see where it is, and so I'll be okay. <laughs> I'm adding a little more white, a little more white to the mix. Just, you know, making sure we're good. Get my brush with a little bit of the white, and it's got a smidge of the purple in it, but that's okay. I go here a little bit. Maybe there a little bit. Let's glaze that out some. It's too bright. Well, that is looking pretty good on both sides. Don't they look yeah. just very complicated and beautiful and pedally? Very nice. They're very nice. Okay. When we come back, I'm going to show you the next layer on these beautiful back petals. So I've got to put in some of the patterning, the tiger kind of effect and colorant in the petals. So I'll grab my quinacridone magenta and my cad red again. I'm going to come up on, it's a filbert, and I'm going to come up the little ridge a little bit. Just speaking to that sum. Sure. Make sure this is a little, this is wet enough to offload. Making little tigery patterns. Kind of with the edge here.
I'm just letting the brush's shape help me. Yeah. But I don't feel like it's giving me an edge here. Does that make sense? It does. Like as I'm going, I'm like, hmm, I don't love it. And that's okay. Because you know what you do? What do you do? You change brushes. Uh, you don't love it. You change brushes. But I'm not upset what's here. I'm just going to change it a bit. Okay. So hopefully this is helpful to you guys at home. If ever you have something you're like, I don't really like how that worked out. That you don't have to like panic and go, oh no, I have to repaint the whole thing out. I can use what's here. I just want to create a more irregular type pattern. And since I've got to come back with a light color as well, I'm all good. Mm. Now these are almost like stripes or veining. I'm using my number four round, little upward strokes. Again, these will cover a lot of this, but I do want this here to peek through. A little yellow into it. Oh, here it's like a slightly different value. I may also come over here to my altering blue, which creates quite a dark color, almost a gray black because of all the colors in it. We've got primaries in there. Yeah. So I can make some of these a little darker. As some of them are. Let's come over to the other side and add some patterning. Maybe I'll start with my dark color first. Ooh, that does look nice. Brighten up as I go. I'm just winding these little veins and tigering in. That's true. I've got this right here that I'm going to be putting back. Bit of the purple on occasion. When I have that nice patterning in, I'm going to rinse, rinse out. That's you like a it? Cool pattern. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to get a little of my white and yellow again. And create some drama. A brighter color, maybe a little more towards the center of the petals. Just a slightly bigger pop of yellow. Kind of weaving between the pops we don't want to take it out entirely we just want it to kind of intertwine
I'm going to get maybe a little more of my magenta purple. And just along here, darken this little lip. All right, let's call that a step and come back. A few more little details. All right, let's put in some little edging detailing to these little top petals. The first one I'm going to do is I'm going to come in with a dark one. So I'm going to take my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue on my filbert. Just make sure that the edging is frilly. Here. I'm letting the brush kind of like create a kind of hair effect, mm. a veining effect. Really complicated little flower. They are. They're very involved. You know, and you got to give them lots and lots of attention and love. I'm coming back with a light color. I'm using my glazing medium to improve flow. Wow. That's just really pulling that petal in. Is. You could paint these petals for weeks. I could watch you. <laughs> well, we can we can have fun with each other for sure. Just making sure they're frilly and interesting. And come right here and I'll make sure that bend is a little interesting. Back with the dark color on the other side. All right. I think we've got them. I think we've nailed them. We can now start moving on to the next set of petals. So you've gotten a lot of the color mixes down. They might feel complicated, but if you just slow down, get the mini book, look at the mixes there because they're written out at each step. We're going to continue using similar mixes through this whole project. So we're going to be using a lot of what we did here in here. And I'm going to begin with my light kind of coral, well, just a little bit peachy maybe. I'm going to come in the center here, kind of brush this up from these two petals. This is before these two, so that's why I'm painting this one at this time. All right, I'm going to come here and let's, uh, let's get a little orange going. I'm going to add some glazing medium and I'm going to brush from this outer edge. In. And then I'm going to do a similar thing here. Isn't that fun? Yeah. And then I'm going to go right up to my Quinn Magenta. Kind of capturing that dark little toe. And we'll go right up the vein of that. Yeah. Okay. 
That's layer one. Let's dry, come back, and hit the next layer on that petal. So I'm going to add a little bit of light back in here and go into my white. A little more yellow. Just very carefully pushing that back in. Back and forth playing with those layers. I come up here to my quinacridone. Add some white into it. Kind of curl out a little bit of a highlight here. Rinse out. And then back into our orange. But not too deep because I want to keep that light area. And maybe up alongside the magenta vein with a little orange. Rinse out for a second and I'm going to switch to my number four round. I'm going to grab a little of my ultramarine blue and put it into my magenta so that I get kind of like a violet, a deep purple. Run it along that vein. Like brush some in here to create a little shadow. Not bad. Kind of a fun center. Yeah. Exaggerate that highlight a little. Pops it right out. And then we come here with this color and come right under this edge. Get some glazing medium. Yeah, that creates a little bit of a shadow under that petal. Just glazing there. Glaze a little deep in this petal here. And let's glaze a little here. See how that just kind of knocks it back and creates a shadow? Yeah. Okay. Each of those things just pushing color back. Maybe a little more blue. It's very transparent. You glaze a little bit there to exaggerate that. Pretty drama. Drama. Drama, drama, drama. All right. Now we've got this petal. It's standing out from the back petals. We can do these very complicated little structures on the side. For these crazy little petals, I'm going to do my number four round so I have a little more control. Same colors, just in slightly different places and with some different shadows. So it's like you'll be familiar with it, but there'll be a couple new twists. I'm going to begin with my uh, orange. Over here, let's put out some more glaze and liquid because it's our friend, isn't it? Yeah. It's our friend. It's a good friend. Hangs with us. 
If drying time is like your biggest issue in your acrylic, you should know that Golden Artist Colors made an entire line of paint where something like this was the base, and they take a day to dry. Mm -hmm. So a little more, a little more time in your think bucket if you need that. We'll come here and just sort of bring this orange in. Maybe a little red here. Kind of off this little edge and down. Maybe a little more into the cad red. <laughs> A little more cad red. Now I'm going to take my orange, believe it or not, into my purple to create a shadow value of it. And create a little part of the petal that's a bit in shadow here. Come to the far side and get that in now. Coming up here, I'm going to want a little of my pink and white. Pink and white coming up. And go back into my orange. Now, right here into that magenta. That's quite stunning, right? Yeah. First layer of those interesting petals. If I get a little more blue into it, it deepens it. But I'm controlling my color so it doesn't go just gray. Even though that's actually the direction that we're heading. Quins are just interesting in how they color mix and yeah. that they're super forgiving. A little bit dark there. Now I would dry this and then we'll come back and do the, I don't know, the glamour layer. The glamour layer. You've got this. You can do this. Okay, so we don't need to do that much here. We're just going to continue building up on the layers. I'm going to come to the edge of my orange again. And let's pull some pretty pretty in.
I might get a little white on there. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Come up to my pink. But I left the yellow on my brush. Doesn't that create wonderful effects? It is interesting. Maybe a little more white there. So lots of drama. Cad red. I'm just going to play here okay. in these colors. Bring that down here into the fold of that petal there. And maybe a little orange and a folding back there. See, we've got, we've got lots of playroom. Nature played, we should join it. A little magenta. And it's okay if we get a little blue into the mix. Create that deeper value. Yeah. Rinse out. And I'm going to zhuzh the other side. Back into the pink mix. And understand, I'm through quinacridone, cad red, cad yellow, titanium white, and sometimes ultramarine blue. I'm dancing between all these colors. You're dancing. I can see it. A little white and yellow. That looks good. Yeah. Maybe even a little more yellow. Just a pop. Just to give that a glow. Sometimes we're giving it a glow. All right. And underneath here, I've got these wonderful colors. So I'm going to get some white into that. And grab some cad red. It's on that edge there. That's unexpected, isn't it? Mm -hmm. A little white. Some glazing medium and maybe, you know, highlight a little white here. Look at that. Highlight a little white hair. Yeah. My goodness. How do our flowers grow? Real well, I'd say. Yeah, you're doing great with it. I'm going to grab a little cad red, maybe, and some glazing medium. Mm, stroke along the inside of that just for the pure opera punch of it mm. all right i think we nailed it i think we've got those inner petals they are just a glow the structure is defining itself believe it or not we are nearly done yep this is a great flower and you will never feel intimidated by these complicated structures again i even feel better with it when we come back i'm going to show you what you do next So, John, I'm looking here at these two, and I think I actually need to take this black back out. What do you mean? I think that I need to paint this white again because the colors, even though they're deep, I think I want to start from a fresh thing. 
Oh, okay. Sorry, guys. I feel like I do. And this happens sometimes in painting. You look, you look at it and you're like, mm, that's not going to work the way I want. Mm. So I'm going to come back in with my filbert and some white. And I'm going to just... It doesn't even have to be perfectly white. I'm just going to go back in with white here and smooth this out. You just want more white? Yeah. Now this side will kind of vanish into the black with the depth of value that we're going to use, but we just don't. I just don't want to fight the black paint. Huh. Not even here a little bit. I see. And sometimes things are like that where I'm just like, yeah, I don't want to fight it. Certainly. If you don't want to fight it, it'll make you it guys easier don't want for to fight everyone it. else. <laughs> and, that's, and that's not an unusual thing to have happen where you're in a project and you're like, I'm thinking about it, but I want to go this other way. Now, I'm going to dry this. We're not going to go to a whole new step. Hmm. Um, this is just one of those good things like, what do I do if I make a mistake? This is how you would fix something like that. I'm going to dry it. We're going to, through the magic of video, come right back and I will begin painting the petal. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a little of my yellow over to my green. And you're like, wait, why didn't we just use phthalo green? Well, sometimes you don't have phthalo green. You could use it if you wanted to. But I wanted to show you guys that we do have enough colors on our palette to pretty much do anything. I'm going to paint this stem here. Down, 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 down. Around that corner, right? Mm. A little bit of that green. Which is just the blue and yellow. I don't use the ultramarine blue because it will be a very neutralized green. Not a bright saturated green. More like sagebrush or dry tundra. Ah. Okay. So that, we're going to let that dry for a second and I've rinsed out. And let's go into those dark colors that I was talking about. And they are going to be a little dark. I'm going to take my uh, phthalo blue and my ultramarine blue, maybe even a little of my Quinn magenta. Kind of come in there. And then even a little bit to that outside. So yeah, it's dark. It's a deep value. Sometimes I'll clean up between uh, little runs even on the same color. Um, if my paint isn't, if my paint feels sticky or I feel like I need to rinse out. Now this is much Deeper over here, we'll go around the corner. Again, same deep color. That's a deep color, isn't it, John? Yeah. So sometimes things can be a different hue, but a similar value in the black. And this blue is a very similar value. Super pretty. I like the blues. This is probably one of my favorite flowers so far. Really? Yeah. Of this, of this month, of this acrylic April? Of this acrylic April. I don't know. There's so many that have happened. There's been some good ones. Kind of tucking it around the corner a little bit. Maybe a little more magenta to this outside edge. That's kind of fun. So since we fixed some things and we changed some things, let's call it a step to here, dry everything, and we come back, I'll show you the next layer. I'm going to come in with my round now and work on the underside. The underside is quite a lot of uh, green and yellow. It's a much lighter color, and I'm going to even add some white to it. Come under here. Kind of blending that in. Hmm? Some yellow to the green. Yellow to the green. And then white to lighten. 
only this bright color really through here. Feathering a bit. Wipe out. Get a little more of the yellow in the blue. All right, so we made the green with the yellow and blue, and then we just added a lot more yellow to our green mix is how we got there. And I'm going to blend out a little bit with some bright, see that's just some bright green. Mm -hmm. I'm blending those two together. And then if I want it to be darker green, I just add more blue. Sometimes greens are hard. You know, that's one where, you know, people can struggle in the mix. You can struggle, struggle, struggle in the mix of it. I'm going to just make sure that we kind of feather in. Create that little stemming shape, right? It's very bright. It's very interesting. Here, I'm going to want to take a little bit of my, more my quinacridone into my blue mix. Get that brighter purple. Make sure that I've got a nice second line of this. These stripes I'm going to do with white, which is going to be interesting. And I have to do them before I um, add the orange fluff. I'm going to use this purple here to come and add. I can get it with like, like little dots. Little spots on the green. And then little, little stripes. I'm making little stripes with little marks. Mm -hmm. Go doot, 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 doot. Those are like the little zebra stripes. And then some down the stem. I love getting all the little patterning that the irises do. I'm sure a lot of this is like, pollinators see me. <laughs> Birds like, don't eat me. <laughs> <laughs> I like the color contrast. I do too. So much. I rinse out there. Rinse out good. I'm going to take a little of my yellow over here to my white, a little more white. It's pretty light. Kind of exaggerate some of that banding. Kind of fun and poppy. And then let's do something here too. Little touches, right? A little yellow and white. And that's kind of a fun way to go back and do that banding. I say we paint more of these just in general in the future. Yeah, they are really cool. These little lines are regular. They come out as stripes. I want to kind of vary them where I can. You know, we're not making railroad tracks. Mm -hmm. It's looking pretty good. I'm going to come here and get a little more of my purple going up. And I've improved that color. Improve that coverage. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to go way more into my magenta. And I'm going to get a smidge white. So see, there's a little bit of the blue cooling it. And then I'm working wet into wet here, so that's also kind of cooling it. So hopefully it's a noticeable color shift on your leaf. 
but isn't changing the value. In other words, how light or dark your leaf might be is remaining kind of consistent. And then I still might come back with like some deep blue right here. Rinse very well. You want to rinse out really well. And I'm going to take my cad red to my cad yellow. Very bright color. I might even really start more the cad reds. Improve the flow. So we're just allowing a little of that to peek out there. Rinse. Now get reloaded, get reprimed, and then it's a very uh, similar thing here. Little floofy. Yeah, they're little pollinator thingies. Hmm. Where they're like, pollen is welcome here. You can come in and have a moment. So, such pretty colors. That's pretty colors. I'm going to get a little of the white and orange, which makes that interesting peach that we're also fond of. And I'm going to come here. Kind of blend that down. And I'm going to come across here. And again, kind of blend that down. So it's sort of fun. Get a little more white. Couple of little stripes out. And I definitely want to thin this so it flows off my brush. If I have to, I switch to fluid white. Like if I can't get the good line, that's what I do. But I'm going to try to get it with my heavy body today. Hmm. I'm rolling my brush and just going on the toe. And what that does is it just moves the paint to the toe of the brush. that little iris petals being all patterny yeah all righty now i'm gonna dry everything and come back and put the final zhuzh, zhuzh. So that orange, that little orange stuff, fluff coming up from the flower, I need a really bright, bright variant of that. So I'm going to really work my cads. I'm making a nice light orange. I'm loading on the toe of my brush. And I'm going to do the light part here at the end. I 
changing the directionality of them as they go to the, the end of the flower. Going to bring some of this over here. Same, same. And then I'll get into a deeper orange. Kind of giving that some depth. And then even for back here, just more into the cad red. It's kind of, I'm using sort of a localized color to even say that's a little bit in shadow. Back into that deeper orange. What do you think of that? Looks cool. Are they popping? Mm -hmm. They're popping. So I'm going to get a little of my white and my glazy medium. I'm going to come here and just highlight a bit the inside of that petal. See how that pops it up a, a little yeah. bit of heat? I'm going to right here kind of heat that up as well. The value is, is so bright that it's really contrasty and popping. Maybe a little more yellow, just playing with the color. See, it just every layer just gives it a little more. Mm -hmm. Pop, 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 pop. I am pretty happy with how that came out. Oh, me too. It's a nice little flower. It's a nice little abstract. It works all the way around. I think I am ready to give this a sign. Come in here to like one of my blue or purple color with my monogram liner. And I guess I will sign right here because I don't want to sign over the petal. There you go. When we come back, I'm going to tell you what you're going to do next and what we've got going on together. So this type of subject matter, I think, is one of those that you can really fall into, like focusing up macro flower shots where you get into the to the uh, structure of the flower and the color and patterning of the flower and somehow through that get past it being objectively a flower. It's really kind of wonderful. Mm -hmm. If you think this was really cool and you've never heard of the artist George O'Keefe, you probably have, but if you haven't, I highly recommend giving her a Google because she's definitely the mother of this concept. Um, I also would love to encourage you that after Acrylic April is over that you try this again, but like put a lot of time into it. Like right now we're trying to like get in and learn our skills and move on, but like, you know, do a big one and put 10, 20 hours into it. I think you'll be really pleased with the result. Oh man, John, did you love today? I thought it was great. You, John thought it was one of his favorite flowers, which I think is terrific. I definitely want to see yours in group in Acrylic April. Remember, if you're having any trouble with the program, you go into group, you're going to have 100 people who've been there, understand how you're feeling, and can give you words of encouragement to set a fire back in your belly. Um, definitely look for those uh, acrylic April misconceptions that I post, uh, tomorrow's sneak peek short video. Maybe you came to just paint the flower. You can also share it in the Art Sherpa official group or online anywhere with the hashtag Art Sherpa. I will find you. Uh, not like I'm stalking you. <laughs> I just would love to see your version of the painting. If you have any questions, you can leave me a comment after the show. Don't forget to hit subscribe and like and all those things because I do this kind of free art education all the time. Don't I? We do this all the time. All the time. All the time.
uh be good to yourselves guys be good to each other and i want to see you at an easel really soon Bye bye